How's it going, Panthers? We are back with another episode of Panther TV. I can't wait for y'all to see what we've got for you today. Yep, first up, we're featuring some of our Panthers that don't get the recognition that they deserve. Let's take a look at the Pato Color Guard. The Peito High School Color Guard is a unique group of talented performers that you may or may not be too familiar with. They work hard throughout the year to develop their skills and put on some remarkable shows. Panther TV is putting them under the spotlight to learn some more about what they do. Color Guard is basically sort of like a dance team, except we spin, which we will toss flags up in the air and rifles and spin them around your bodies and we dance with those instead of just dancing. Being in Color Guard is far from easy. They face difficulties and challenges just like any other team. It's really hard because we have to catch at very specific parts and in very specific ways. So if we toss just a little bit wrong, then our catch will be all kinds of wrong and we won't be able to. We also have obstacles like wind. We have to learn how to toss in the wind and control the pull. As previously mentioned, Color Guard is unique in its own way. There are a number of things that set it apart from a typical dance team. Well, to begin with, we dance with equipment, and you don't really see that normally in dance. You usually just see dance, but you see pretty flags and equipment like rifle and saber, and you see expression with the equipment. The Color Guard performs in the halftime show alongside the band during football games. After their marching season ends, they move on to their Winter Guard season, in which they take their own distinctive show to competitions. Um, in Winter Guard, we, that's where we're like, it's our like, season, it's just guard, and it's like a full day thing. Uh, you have different like ranks, so you have different classes, and for our class this year, so we're still new, it's novice, so we go with like other schools who are their lowest team, and it's just like, you have, the, there's four judges, and they judge you on different bases, and they, every rank they gave you, they give you at the end, it's like an average, and that's your rank at the end. A major part of being in guard is learning to endure the challenges and maintaining a positive attitude through all the obstacles. Well, they make us do a lot of exercises like ab workouts across the floors, and we're always rehearsing with the band. So like, the, the more that you rehearse with the band, and the more you go to practice, the more in shape you get. So it becomes really easy, in my opinion. One thing you have to keep in mind though, it's kind of hard to like perform, but you have to like always look up. That's part of what's like performing. You can't look terrified or like tired, you have to just push through. Another important aspect about Guard is the team itself. They're almost a family and anyone can take part no matter their skill set. When you're in Color Guard, I mean, you get to build like a really big family and like build friends. So if you're like new to anything, if you're just coming into high school or something, you will automatically be put into like a family or a group that you'll be able to hang out with, make new friends, have a whole nother school family and enjoy just being around them. You don't have to have any experience. You can just come as you are and we'll shape you. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the struggles, some people don't believe Color Guard is a sport. There are a number of reasons why they're wrong. It's definitely just... a sport. It's hard work. And... I would challenge them to spend the long hours outside. I would challenge yes. them to try and throw and catch rifles and sabers. I would challenge them to like dance at the same time, trying to move from one side of the field to the other side of the field. And, like, you still look counts. up, yeah, and, spin and you like and... look up and just perform to the audience and make a connection. Last but not least, like in any sport, being in guard means making mistakes and learning to embrace them. Not bringing water. Not bringing water. Oh my god. There's one where I was actually on a chair um, and I was doing right. And I tossed it. I tossed a six. And when it came down, I got so scared that I fell off the chair <laughs> at the same time. And the, on the way down, the rifle whacked me in the head. And like I blacked out for like five seconds. It was so horrible. But. I had to drive home, mine was, so I had to wake up. Mine was during a performance, and <laughs> we had to spin at a prop, and it was moving around on the field, and I was really nervous, and it was kind of windy. So I threw the toss up in the air, and as it came down, I was ready to catch, and I looked up to make sure it was right, going right into my hands, and it hit my eye. And I had a black eye at school for a while, and everyone thought I was gotten in a fight. 
That's a wrap for our color guard feature. They certainly deserve recognition for their hard work and effort, and hopefully you learned something new about them. That's awesome. I didn't know much about the color guard. Me neither, but now I know. Next up, we have our next Women's History Spotlight. This one is about Gabriela Montero, a Venezuelan pianist who won Grammys for her performances. Take a look. Gabriela Montero is a Venezuelan pianist known for a very specific real-time improvisation of complex musical pieces on themes proposed by her audience and other sources. Her interesting style of playing has won her many awards, including a Grammy in 2015 for her Best Classical Album, a five-star review from BBC Music Magazine, and she was the first woman to win the Beethoven Award in 2018. Over the course of her career, she learned to become a very skilled pianist and in concerts often makes the audience interact with her and the music. She tells them to play a tune, be it a movie theme, a national anthem, etc. And even if she doesn't know it, she'll learn it, play it, and then improvise to make a whole new song out of the old one. Gabriela Montero finds a way to connect the audience to her music and with herself. In addition, she has been constantly fighting for human rights, especially for her people of Venezuela, showing her support and trying to give them a voice. Being someone in high standing and criticizing the government gave many more courage. Today, Gabriela Montero is still playing concerts worldwide and currently lives in Barcelona, Spain. Wow, she's really talented. I wish I could play the piano. Don't forget, tomorrow, March 22nd, is the last day to sign up for the dodgeball tournament. Yeah, do that. March 29th is the championship game. Do you love playing video games? Do you enjoy hanging out with your friends? If you said yes to either of those questions, then Video Game Club is for you. The Video Game Club is in room 1328. How do you sign up? It's easy. Just talk with the sponsor, Ms. Febles, and come to the class every Wednesday during Power Hour and lunch. So, if you enjoy a variety of game consoles and video games, then come check out the Video Game Club every Wednesday at lunch. Hey Panthers, for y'all that don't know, it's me, Alex Elko, and I'm here to tell you about a really cool program that this school has set up for actually everybody here. Introducing Naviance. This service is easy to use and can give you useful insight for your career path. And you can access all of this information by going to My Katie Cloud and you are into Naviance. Naviance, connecting, learning to life. Y'all be sure to check out Naviance. They're still doing open labs on Tuesdays and Thursdays in room 1325. Yeah, I really to get on top of that. It tells you everything you need to know about tuition and accepting costs, etc. You can even build a resume, and colleges are starting to require those these days. I know! Well, that's it for today, guys. Show's over. We're done. That's a wrap. Out of here. Bye. <laughs>